Hey guys, I know Mother's Day is right around the corner and I have some DIYs I wanted to share, so let's just get right into this. To start, I'm taking this 12 by 12 um, panel from Walmart. It's by the uh, brand Plaid and it's just in their crafters section. And um, this is a more personalized Mother's Day gift, but it's going to be for my mother-in-law. So it's going to say uh, grandma's garden on it. And I created that stencil and I did link it down below if anybody wants to recreate this gift. Um, so I started off by staining this side of the panel. I thought that I would use this side but the stain was, it must have been old because it was very sticky and it was very blotchy and I could not get it to uh, cooperate. And when I started to um, wipe away the excess, it just started balling up. So I decided I am going to scrap that side and I just use my antique wax on this side of the panel. And this is the side that I am going to put my design on. So I just am finding the center for that grandma's garden stencil and I'm going to place that down and I'm going to take my plaster chalk paint by Waverly and I'm going to give this a coat of that paint. Now, every month has their own birth flowers, and some of them have multiple birth flowers, but I just created this stencil on Design Space, and again, this stencil will be linked down below as well. And I just wanted to show you that um, whatever flowers, if you decide to use this, you can go in and delete um, the months underneath. I just wanted to uh, mark all the months for anybody who wants to use it so they know which flower goes with which month. Um, but you can go right in, click that month, and then press delete. And the same with the flowers that you don't need. You can just go into design, um, go click on that design, and then just press the delete button, and you will have the flowers that you need, or you'll be left with the flowers that you need. Um, but yeah, I, I just did every month, so... Um, and you can look up online which flowers um, go with that month, and then you can... Um, choose which paint paint you want to use for those flowers that's what I did I just looked up <clears throat> I looked up the flower excuse me that it was and then I decided uh what color I was going to paint them now for my mother-in-law she has six grandkids so I'm going in with six different flowers um for my first and my third flower I am using this violet pansy color by folk art and that is for the month of september so it is an aster flower and a lot of them are that purple color so that is why i am painting them purple and then next i'm going to go in with white for my second flower because um, that's the month of april and that's a daisy so most daisies are white with yellow center so i'm also going to take maize by waverly and i'm just going to fill in the center of that um, daisy there For my fourth flower, I'm going in with Anita's um, paint in terracotta and apple barrels, King's Gold. And I'm just going to start by using that terracotta color on the outside of this flower. And then I'll take the King's Gold and I'll go on the inside of the flower. Um, this is for the month of October and this is uh, marigold. So when I looked up online like what most marigolds look like, they were a lot of that um, uh, orange and goldish colors. Then for my fifth flower, that is an iris for the month of February. And I am going in with that violet pansy and I'm going also in with lavender by Waverly. And I'm just going to mix those two colors together and fill that in just so I get a little bit of a deeper than a lavender color. And then for my last flower, that's the month of March, and it's a cherry blossom, and I'm going to go in with Ballet Slipper and Pink Parfait. And I'm going to take that Pink Parfait on the outside of the cherry blossom, then I'll take the Ballet Slipper and um, fill that on the inside of the flower. 
And I mean, you don't even have to use certain colors for certain flowers. You can paint them whatever colors that you would like. I just wanted to kind of go by what the flowers look like and what color they typically are. Um, so for the stem of the cherry blossom, I'm going in with Java and I'm just going to fill that in. Um, they're typically like a brown stem. Then for my um, iris, I'm going in with antique green. And I'm just going to fill that one in. For the marigold, I'm taking this bright green color, but I'm going to mix it with the antique green color. And just to get a little bit of a deeper um, than that bright green is. For the two aster flowers, I'm going to take this moss um, paint by Waverly and I'm going to mix it with the antique green again. And I'm going to fill in those two um, leaves and stems of that flower. And then for the daisy, I'm just going in with the bright green color. And then next, I'm going to take my plaster chalk paint because I cut out stencils of all the grandkids' names um, to go underneath their birth flower, and I'm just going to fill it in with that plaster color. Next, I'm going in with these cheese markers that I got from the BP section at Target. And it kind of looks like a vegetable or like a flower steak. So I figured I would put that on there for a little added touch. I cut out a stencil that says Mother's Day 2023. And I'm going to take my sandstone chalk paint by Waverly and just fill that stencil in. And again, I have that stencil linked down below as well. And you can go in and um, resize any of these designs that you need to fit your projects if you decide to make these. And then I'm just taking these adhesive dots by Gorilla Glue and I'm going to place that stake on the sign with these. Um, this way it can be removed if she wants to remove it. And then I'm sure everybody remembers these Happy Planner books from Dollar Tree. We all had to have them. Anyways, I'm going in with these little heart stickers and I'm just going to place that over that little hole that's on that stake um, just to kind of cover it up. And that is a finished project. And it did take me a while, but it should be pretty easy considering all the stencils are created if anybody would like to recreate this. And I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, so for this DIY, I am taking this little Hello Autumn um, little mailbox sign and I'm just going to remove that twine hanger and those beads. I'm going to put those beads aside because I will use them again and the twine. And then I'm going to take my plaster chalk paint by Waverly and I'm going to give this um, inside of this uh, little mailbox two coats of paint. After my paint has dried, I'm going in with these rub-on transfers that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut out the Farm Fresh Flowers transfer, and I'm going to transfer that to the inside of that mailbox.
Uh, to transfer this, I did start out by using my Cricut tool, but I remembered that using a back of a paintbrush works so much better. So that's what I did when I realized this was not working with my uh, Cricut tool. So here I can go in uh, individually with my paintbrush and just um, transfer every letter on. And then just carefully I remove that uh, transfer. You want to make sure that all your letters are down before you fully um, pull it up just to make sure that it is transferred all the way. Anyways, I'm going to go in with these flowers. I did have the lavender, but I didn't end up using that. I do use those little yellow flowers from Dollar Tree. And this bush stem is from, or berry mix is from Walmart, but I don't think I use any of that. I do use this stem. I think that is... I don't know if it's Dollar Tree or Walmart, but I did use some of that from there. So I'm going to just cut these flowers down so I can fit them into this mailbox. And I'm just testing out to see how they fit. That's why we're in fast mode. I just wanted to get an idea of where I want to place everything. I still want to be able to see that sign, but I want to have quite a few flowers in there. But before I stick those flowers in, I remembered that I wanted to Mod Podge this transfer down because it does definitely scratch off easily so make sure when you put a transfer down put a wax or um, a coat of um, mod podge over it this way it does not um, rub away and then here i am again just going in with my stems and my flowers and filling in this mailbox i am going to take some hot glue just to make sure that they stay where i put them Now here I'm going to go in with those two white beads that came on this sign. I am going to put that um, orange bead aside, but I'm going to take two of my um, wooden beads that are about the same size as the white bead, and I'm just placing both those beads back on the way they came um, through those two twine strings. Um, so you're just putting both strings through those beads at the same time. And then I did the wood. I did the two white and then the wood bead again. And then I'm just going to tie a knot at the top, pull it tight, make sure it's not going anywhere. And that is the end of this DIY. It's I, I just love it. I think it's so beautiful for Mother's Day, for spring, for summer, and even fall. Like You could even use this in the fall. Yellow flowers are beautiful for fall. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this and get some inspiration. Okay, so here's another personalized gift, but um, they sell these little farm animals at Dollar Tree, and I'm sure you can find them at a lot of different stores, but I just cut out some cow print off my design space, and I am making this for my mom because she loves cows, and I thought this would be a cute addition to her kitchen. Um, anyway, so I should have started by painting the cow had I known that this material is like the vinyl just did not want to stick to it at all. So I had to basically go in one by one placing um, this vinyl down on the cow just so it would stay because it was just, uh, I don't know, I should have done like one coat of my ink chalk paint and we probably would have been okay. Then the vinyl would have sticked. So there's a heads up for anybody who wants to use vinyl on these little farm animals. They're just, it just does not stick. Anyway, here's the process of me thinking that I'm placing this vinyl down, but it just did not work. You can see I'm like going in one by one, just placing it down. Um, I eventually just took it off and just placed them down myself. And next I'm going in with my white chalk paint by Waverly and I give this cow two coats of paint.
and then I removed all that stencil. I guess I skipped all that part. And I had cut out a stencil that says Michelle's Kitchen. And like I said, it's just like a little personalized gift. They're cute for anybody um, who loves farm animals or animals in general. And I'm going in with my lavender chalk paint and I'm going to give that two coats. But I think I'm going to take a paint pen and go over the writing just because it doesn't show up very well. So I'm going to try to find a purple pen because that's my mom's favorite color and go in with that and just paint over it. <clears throat> but that's the end of the DIY. It's really easy to make. And like I said, it's just cute and personalized for your mom or your grandmother or just any special uh, woman in your life. Here's another really easy um, DIY. I'm taking this breadboard from Dollar Tree. It's in the Crafter Square section. I cut out this stencil that I found on Design Space. I will also have this stencil linked down below if anybody would like to use it. I'm taking one of these markers that I got off of Amazon. Um, it's basically like a heat burning marker. So you just um, use it on anything that you want to and then you take your heat gun and you just um, use that heat to bring out that burnt look and it was really simple to use um i am just going to take a tissue and wipe away any of the excess um, marker so it doesn't get on any of my other part of my design and then here i'm just taking my heat gun and you want to go really fast over this you don't want to stay in one section for too long because then it's just going to burn that area that you are keeping your heat gun over and you can go um, as dark or as light as you'd like to. I stopped here and then I'm taking some uh, thin twine from Dollar Tree, just wrapping it around. I'm going to tie a knot in the back and that is the complete DIY. It was really that easy. I think maybe if I make it again, I'm going to paint the breadboard, maybe in like a white color and see what happens. I'm not sure. I've never used the heat tools on like paint. So I guess we'd have to see how that would turn out. I'm not quite sure. Maybe it wouldn't look so good. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this and get some inspiration from it. Okay, so I'm going in with this little house you can get from Dollar Tree. I'm taking my antique wax and I'm giving a coat of this wax on the entire house. And then just making sure to wipe away any excess wax and letting that dry. Next, I went on to Design Space and I found a stencil that I liked and it says home is where mom is. It did have two little hearts, but I cut those out because I'm going to add something different to it. I am taking Mod Podge and I'm going to place this down on the stencil first just because I don't have my regular stencil paper. I want to make sure none of that paint bleeds that I'm going to use next. I let that Mod Podge dry and then I'm going to go in with my Sandstone Chalk Paint by Waverly and I'm going to give this one coat of paint. I normally do two coats of paint and I would say I recommend definitely two coats of paint because you know it just has a more opaque finish. Um, I don't know why I didn't do two coats but I must have been a, in a rush and didn't realize it but I would normally do two coats of paint. And this stencil is linked down below for anybody who wants to use it. You can get to it quickly. I have it linked under um, Home is Where Mom Is. Next, I'm going to go in with these um, flower stickers from Dollar Tree, but I don't want to use that gold color. Um, so I'm just going to take my celery chalk paint and I'm going to paint them. Um, I do three coats of this paint on these flowers. I just feel like this color is a little more springish and it just really um, livens up that um, little house. Next, I'm just going to hot glue the flowers down. You could just place them down. Um, with the stickiness that comes in the back, but I just feel like they, that won't stay long enough. So definitely hot glue. And lastly, I'm gonna go in my Waverly Clear Wax because the paint on those stickers does chip pretty easily. So I just wanna make sure that that paint is not gonna go anywhere. 
And that is the end of this DIY and I just think it's so easy to make. I have all the stencils linked down below for any of these DIYs I make so it should be easy for you to go in and find them if you'd like to use them. And I really hope you guys like this. I love it. I think it's adorable and it just would mean so much to one of our moms. Okay, so I just saw this quote online. I thought it was so sweet, so I had to recreate this. I am going in with my antique wax in this panel. I'm not sure if it's from Walmart or Dollar Tree, but I know they sell them at both. And I'm going to give the outside of this um, sign, the frame of it, a coat of this wax. And I'm making sure to get inside the frame um, just to make sure it looks finished and a um, little more like high end I guess or like it came from a store um, if you leave it that light color it just won't look right I'm just making sure to give the back of this frame a um, coat of this wax wow yeah anyways a coat of the wax on the back of the frame make sure to wipe away the excess and then I'm going to go in with my white chalk paint by Waverly and I'm going to uh, paint in the middle of the sign. And I'm going very slowly and very carefully around the frame of the sign just to make sure I don't get any of that paint on that wax. I mean, if I do, it's no big deal. I can go back over with the wax, but I'm trying to be very careful so I don't have to do that. Next, I'm going in with these um, wood alpha tiles. I want to say I got them from Dollar General. And I'm just going to spell out the word Grammy. Now, this can be um, customized to anybody. It could be for your mom, grandma, Mimi, mama, <laughs> mama, anything that you call your grandmother or mother. And um, yeah. Just customize it, and if it's a longer word, which this one is kind of long, I mean, you can um, just use a bigger sign if you need to. And then I'm just going in with my hot glue. I have a little block underneath the letters to kind of to make sure they're um, as straight as possible. Next, I cut out this design. Well, I created this design on Design Space, and then I cut it out on Stencil, and I do have this link down below as well. And like I said, this can be customized, so you can go in to um, customize this uh, design, and then you can edit the text to any name that you want to use. Um, I'm going to take my ink chalk paint here, and I'm just filling in the stencil. And then I cut out this heart from my um, Cricut and I'm just going to use this Rogue chalk paint. I got this uh, paint from Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to fill that in. Now when I created this stencil, I do have the heart included so it doesn't have to be um, cut out separately from this design. Next, I'm going in with some um, twine, jute twine from Dollar Tree and I'm just tying it around the back and then coming around the front and knotting it and I'm going to leave the two strings hanging because I'm going to add beads to those strings. And I'm just going in with a little bit of hot glue to make sure that twine stays in place. And I added some hot glue to the end of the bead where the knot is to make sure that that bead does not come off that twine. And that is the end. I just think it's so sweet. Uh, it's just, I mean, the sweetest quote you could give to your grandmother or even your mother. And I hope you guys um, find some inspiration from this. 
So this is a really easy DIY, if you can even call it that. I'm taking these two frames. They have their um, the inserts where you can insert flowers or um, pictures or um, paper, anything like that. So I'm going to take the one from Target that I have that was $3 from the VP section. And I'm just going to um, remove any of that sticky stuff. Make sure I clean my um, plastic really well. It's not glass, it's just plastic, which is okay. And it's not breakable for the most part. <laughs> um, and then I'm going in to start, I'm going to go in with this heart. I um, have, link uh, have link below a Mother's Day 2023 um, design that you can cut from Cricut and I'm just going to use my ink chalk paint and fill this design in. This heart came from Dollar Tree. They have those little um, packets of shapes in the crafter square section and then basically all I did was um, my son came home with a flower the one day and I was like oh my gosh I want to save this forever because you know those are just like the little special things in life and I saw that I had this frame that I could stick it in and I was like that's it that's what I'm doing and I just thought this would be such a sweet idea for a grandmother as well um just have your child or children go outside pick some flowers one flower multiple flowers and just stick it in one of these frames and they'll forever be able to cherish that little flower that they picked and i mean it just means so much to me i'm sure it means just as much to other mothers and grandparents but that is it. <laughs> that's it it's that easy i just wanted to share that idea if somebody's like you know need some ideas and want them to be you know a, a very affordable idea this is like from the heart and very sweet All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you get some inspiration to recreate one of these, all of the links for the design space will be down in the description box. I really appreciate all of you. And I just want to say happy Mother's Day to all you beautiful moms. Thanks.